Welcome to the tutorial for using EasyBibs Auto Cite feature for citing websites. EasyBib is a great tool to help you cite sources and more. To use, navigate to EasyBib by clicking on the link from the Media Center page or by going to easybib.com. The very first thing you should do each time you use EasyBib is log in. As a Northern student, you have an EasyBib Pro account, so use it. EasyBib will save all of your work until you decide to delete it. Your login is the same as your Google Chrome login, your school email and password. You can also choose to log in using the red Sign In with Google button. You'll know you have successfully logged in because you'll see your name appear in the top right corner of the screen. Now, EasyBib knows who you are, so all of your work will automatically be saved. When beginning a new assignment, it is best to organize any citations you will have in a project folder. If you do not have a project created yet for your current assignment, click the New Project button and name your project. There is no need to add anything else to this pop-up box unless you desire to. Your account is already set up to cite using the MLA style, which is the style our school uses. Click Create when done. EasyBib will add your new project to your list of existing projects. To open the bibliography to start adding citations, click on the bibliography link under your project's name. To have EasyBib help auto cite a website, follow these steps. Make sure you are in the correct project. You can see the project name in the top left hand corner of your screen. Make sure you are also on the website tab. EasyBib will default to this, so it should already be on that. You can have EasyBib find your website in several ways, but the easiest and most efficient way is by entering your website's URL or web address. Only the website you are citing can have that exact URL so use it to have EasyBib locate the website. For example, if I wanted to cite this website on the ring-tailed lemur, I would copy the website's URL and enter it into EasyBib. EasyBib will try to determine if your website is a credible source. If it has not been evaluated, that is not necessarily bad. Just make sure the source you are using passes the APART evaluation test. In this case, our source is credible, so I will just click continue. You will be directed to the editing screen. While EasyBib is usually very good with auto-citing print books, it often makes errors when auto-citing websites. Remember, it is only a computer. You are smarter. Think of EasyBib as a calculator, like you would use in math class. If you enter numbers and operations in a calculator and hit the equals button, you will always get an answer. But if the information you entered is not correct, then your answer will also be incorrect. EasyBib works the same way. If the information on the editing screen is wrong or missing, and you just hit create, then your citation will be incorrect. So always check the editing screen for any errors. To help illustrate how to cite this website, I will place the screen side by side. Start at the top of the editing screen. Website sources will almost always be content originally published on a website, so leave that box the way it is. Next, check your article title. EasyBib thinks that our article title is too long. That really isn't the problem. Your article title can be as long as it needs to be, but there is something wrong with this article title. Look over at your website. Your article title should always be the answer to the following question. What am I reading about on this page? In this case, we are reading about ring-tailed lemur. We can see that right here at the top of the article. This is the article title. Back in EasyBib, I could see that EasyBib got this partially correct. It is our job to fix the error. We will take out the S and everything after it so that the article title is exactly as what appears on the website, ring-tailed lemur. Now this part is correct. Next, EasyBib is looking for an author. It is very common to not have an author's name listed on a website. If you check both the top and bottom of your article and cannot locate a person's name, then just leave this part blank on the editing page. For this article, we don't seem to have an author listed. I don't see one at the top, and I do not see one at the bottom of the article. Be careful with choosing just any name you see as part of a website. There is a name here, but this is showing the person that has taken the photograph above, not written the article. So in this case, we will leave the author spot blank in EasyBib, 
since our website did not provide one. Next is the website title. This is different than the article title. An article title is what you were reading about specifically, like the ringtailed lemur. But a website title is what larger website does this article come from? This whole website is not about lemurs. A good general rule to finding the website title is to look at the top of your website. Often, the website title will be listed in larger, maybe stylized font, and possibly a logo. In this case, we could see that National Geographic is at the top. A good check to see if this is indeed the website title is to click on different articles. Clicking around should change the article title, but it should not change the website title. For instance, if we click on Amphibians, we are now looking at an article with the title Amphibians, but our website title has not changed. See how National Geographic is still at the top. Looking back at EasyBib, we can see that EasyBib entered the website title correctly, so we will leave that unchanged. Next is the publisher or sponsor of the website. Sometimes this is not given to us on the website. In cases like that, we would just leave it blank like EasyBib has. However, often the publisher is listed. EasyBib just couldn't find it. It is our job, remember, to fix any errors. Typically, a publisher for a website would be listed at the bottom of a website. You want to look for anything that says publisher, published by, or even just the copyright symbol, the C in the circle. On this website, we could see the copyright symbol at the bottom. It shows 1996-2015 National Geographic Society. The publisher piece of that information is National Geographic Society, so we will enter that into EasyBib. Remember, when you are in charge of entering information into the editing screen in EasyBib, spelling and capitalization are your job. If you misspell something or do not capitalize or space it properly, EasyBib thinks that's what you want. It will not fix it for you. In cases where you can copy and paste, do so to avoid errors. Next, we need to determine if we want our website's URL to appear in the citation. Your school account is set to no, since the MLA style does not require this. Unless your teacher tells you otherwise, leave this set to no. Next is the date of publication for the website, or the date it was last updated. Sometimes this will not be listed for a website, and you would just leave it blank. However, we could see a date at the bottom of this website. Typically, we choose the most recent year, so in this case, 2015. If we don't have a day or a month, we just leave those pieces out. Lastly, EasyBib should fill in the date of access for you. This will be the current date. MLA style requires you to include the date you use the website since websites can change so quickly. Once you've decided all the information for the website has been added correctly, Click Create Citation and EasyBip will add the citation to your project. Once you have cited all sources you wish to for an assignment, even if it's just one citation, you need to get your citation out of EasyBip to turn it into a formal works cited page. To do this, follow the steps for exporting. Have the project open for the citation or citations you will include in your works cited. Click the Export button. Choose Save to Google Docs. Do not use the copy and paste feature. Copy and pasting from EasyBib will not create a properly formatted MLA Works Cited page, so always avoid this option. Instead, choose Save to Google Docs. You may be asked to allow EasyBib to connect to your Google account. If you are asked this, click Accept. If you are not logged into your Google account, you will also be asked to do this at this time. You will be given a direct link to your Works Cited. Click Go to Google Docs. This will open your properly formatted MLA Works Cited page. Do not change anything. It is perfect. You may, however, wish to rename the file so you know what it is. Notice how EasyPip followed all the MLA rules for creating a Works Cited page. Our Works Cited is typed in Times New Roman, size 12 font, would be alphabetized if we had more than one citation. It is double spaced. It has a title called Works Cited that is centered, and all of our other citations begin on the left margin. Any citation that goes over one line long 
EasyDip has applied a hanging indent to show that the next line or lines belong together. And that's it! No matter what class you are working on an assignment for, if you are asked to cite your sources and include a proper works cited page, you should always be using your EasyDip account to assist you in doing this properly.